Okay, thank you for tuning in to Stampscaping 101. This is my Wolves in the Mist scene. I, it's the first time I've used these wolves before, and I've done them in a scene that uh, one of many different types of scenarios that I envision them being in, you know, or I couldn't wait to try when I, you know, um, got to got around to stamping them out. And uh, I have plenty of plans for these uh, types of images, and really all the images, but I was really curious about the... Uh, the wolves here kind of like running through the snow in the moonlight you know I was kind of trying to think of some dramatic scenarios for them but um, I really like how they look and I think that I don't know why I just never went with kind of larger um, imagery like that figures in the past I generally you know when I'm designing stamps I want to go for something as universally applicable as possible, so I've typically stuck to kind of smaller animals where you can really stamp them as an almost like an afterthought or as an afterthought into any given scene where, you know, if you have larger animals like this, they really play a much more prominent role in the composition and you kind of have to, you know, think about them in terms of a, being an integral part of the scene, if not the subject matter. Now, if I had a little you know, wolf like that amongst a, you know, full-size page or something like that, and I stamped it wherever, you know, unless there was some other figure in the scene or something like that, your eye would really go right to the uh, subject. But compositionally, in terms of area, these larger types of uh, animals and figures really, you know, play a real prominent um, compositional role again in terms of the area that they uh, take up so you know I mean if I had a bunch of other things going on in here and it was a really busy scene I you know I might not have room for these animals as kind of like an afterthought like I said so but I don't know I really enjoy them being kind of like a, you know the prominent foreground element within a given scene I think it adds to uh, or it, I don't know kind of adds up to a much more dramatic um, visual than, like I said, than having it smaller in scale. So, I know it's fun to play around with both. So nowadays we have uh, when these uh, stamps eventually are released, which is very soon. Um, I don't know. There'll be a kind of a nice addition to uh, the other imagery out there. So, anyways, uh, if you choose to watch the video. I hope you enjoy it. It's very similar to some of the more recent ones with the. Uh, Oh, where'd it go? I don't know. The Dr. Martin's um, bleed proof light and with a, you know, the splatter painting technique and uh, just some streaks, you know, with the uh, color box stylus tool in a very easy monochromatic uh, uh, color scheme here. So uh, just really fun stuff and uh, really enjoyed uh, playing around with the walls. Okay, hello from rainy Southern California. I'm going to stamp something out using these two images here. It's the uh, wolves running and they're in pairs. Okay, they're two different sizes to give a little bit of um, I don't know, depth and dimension to a scene. They come in this um, canine sheet set. Uh, they're not released quite yet. Um, my uh, rubber supplier, um, Rubber Stamping Depot, manufactures um, my rubber and uh, my sets. So um, He's waiting on some matrix boards, which are the, uh, the mold uh, material to uh, make molds from the um, magnesium etchings which are positives and the, the molds are negatives so waiting for that and I just received those uh, inserts for the sets too so um, sets are a good way to go provided uh, someone you know is drawn to and will use uh, you know the different designs on the sheet you don't want to buy a whole sheet for like you know two designs that you like or something like that it's better off buying them all a cart but if you like wolves hopefully you'll, hopefully you'll like the entire set uh, they should be fun to use I haven't uh, used these yet as you see 
so just testing them out right now. But just visually inspection, you know, visual inspection, it looks like the, uh, the detail has been very nicely reproduced by uh, the engraver that we use in, in terms of uh, retaining the, uh, the details within the, uh, you know, the, uh, the imagery. Um, I'm just looking around at the edges here. You want the, uh, the raised part of these to be kind of nice and vertical if possible. Um, sometimes, you know, the plates in years past have come with a slant. I've switched engravers, but um, it's how they kind of eat away at this area right here. If it's, if it's kind of like an at a slant like that, then when you get into the uh, really tight detail, like in these little dots right here, it'll tend to puddle up. So you want a nice kind of vertical edge as opposed to kind of a pyramidal type of thing where the uh, uh, rubber comes in contact with the paper. You want it to be nice and uh, vertical so that, you know, there's um, as deep um, a ridge as possible, or a valley, I guess you can say, um, between the uh, um, spaces. All right, a little technical thing, but that's the type of thing that I always uh, test for when, uh, whenever I receive the uh, the plates back and rubber. Um, all right, so these guys, of course, are um, reverse, so that when we stamp them out, they're positive, so that they will be running um, from right to left. And I was thinking about something like this. It's hard for you to kind of tell with the uh, imagery like that, but larger things, lower, okay, in general, and smaller objects um, in the background, or far, smaller objects that represent something farther away are usually higher up on the composition, you know. If I put a sun or a moon in here, it would be, you know, fairly high in the composition or something like that. Okay, so that being said, I'm thinking about a composition here um, that I thought about one of, you know, many as I'm drawing these images. I'm, you know, kind of, you can't help but just kind of imagine how you'll use them in a, in a given scene. I'm sure you're all the same way if, you, you know, as being rubber stampers, you, we look at something and then we think, you know, things often flash by in our head about applications for those images. Otherwise, I don't, you know, if we look at something, it doesn't inspire, it, it doesn't evoke any type of uh, card or imagery, we, we're probably not going to be interested in it. Sometimes it's not something that we're imagining, something, it's something visual, like we've seen samples from other people, but one way or another, we can kind of imagine ourselves using it, so that's the same thing that goes, you know, through, that I go through with um, when I'm designing things and, you know, like these wolves and you know, specifically I'm imagining that in some kind of kind of a dramatic setting in terms of the sky, uh, time of day, the colors and things like that. That's why a lot of these, as I've said in a couple of the past videos for this new series, they're kind of done more in silhouette, so they're more solid in shape. I've left some um, details in them, you know, just so they look a little bit more um, realistic, or not realistic, but kind of more three-dimensional, I should say. Okay, now this is this snowy bank, and what I'm doing is I'm wiping off some of the ink down here, just so it stamps out a little bit lighter. I'll still see some, probably some uh, of the impression. Well, maybe I'll squirt this a little bit here and really remove some of that ink off the bottom, just so I don't get that edge. I just want to get the snowy kind of uh, formations um, within this given uh, image. Um, if this represents something like water, uh, you know, the, uh, the river could be dry and you'd have these wolves running across or whatever, but I'm going to make it where um, it just kind of uh, fades out at the bottom. That way I won't have too much texture uh, to compete with the silhouette forms of my imagery, my main characters, okay? Now, I could have stamped this out in like a blue or something like that where it's lighter to begin with, and then I would stamp these out darker, but I want to just go for a real quick um, scene here, just using um, uh, black 
um, impressions. Okay, so that is that. You can see where it, um, the bottom part of it didn't stamp out, so I don't have like this edge of a river or something like that down here. So always look at your stamps. Um, well, you don't have to always, but um, look at your stamps, you know, when you look at um, scenic stamps in general, and kind of when you, I mean, if you, have, if you haven't done this before, this might be kind of a weird concept, but what you do is you look at an image, and you can use certain portions for what you want, you know, and that's the way, you know, uh, uh, scenic stamping goes. I don't have to do this top part and I don't have to have that you know that little horizon but I could use these different things like this down here like maybe I'd want this again down here but I don't want that top part showing but I want all that little texture in there that would say kind of snow with these little grasses kind of growing out of it I can repeat this over and over but I can just use like a smaller portion of it and that's what's one of the things that are the beauty of uh, this type of imagery you can use different portions for what you want unlike an outline design where if you don't kind of color in part of it, it looks like it's missing something of it because you don't have this continuous outline to define what that object is, but scenic stamps, you don't have to do that, you know, you can kind of get more mileage out of them, and that's a good way to, to do it um, because, uh, you know, you can, if it's coming down to one design or another, or let's, ch you know, choosing a different design, let's say you have a choice or something, you're on a budget, you know, you can kind of get away with um, using smaller portions of certain objects um, and uh, kind of avoiding redundancy or something of that sort. Alright, so here, these are some pine trees, and I'm just kind of planting them within there. I just masked up mask that area off with a paper towel, and that's really all you need to do. You don't have to go for a perfect mask in scenic stamping either. Preferably, you have things overlapping, so kind of a real careful mask really isn't conducive to the overall um, scene either. So I can go like this. I have a little bit of that um, horizon line showing. It's not really the horizon line, but just the top of that little hill right there. And I just stamp those trees right into it like that. Okay, one of the other benefits of kind of tonal stamping, at least when it comes to uh, scenic stamping. I'm not against outline designs, I love them, you know. I have many myself, but that's just a different form of stamping, you know, where you're composing um, kind of in a different way and layering things more specifically, you know, layer things with the. Uh, you know, kind of a, you know, minimal masking when it comes to that. You have to really cut out things specifically. Okay, so masking off this bottom portion. Notice I'm not masking off these trees because I don't need to because they're solid black, okay? And I'm just going to position this moon in the background, okay? This is going to be a really, uh, kind of a stark, more kind of dramatic scene, hopefully. All right, let's see try to get it to where I'm not... I might need another mask. It's as simple as that, though. Okay. And I'll have this moon kind of peeking out from behind those trees. I have a little bit more of a... Since I'm doing two layers of mask right there, I'm going to stand up and press a little bit harder in that area where there's two paper towels stacked right there. If I get a little bit of a white kind of a, you know, ghosting um, in between image and other objects, it's not really going to be a big deal because I still have some uh, toning to do, but as you can see, I don't, so there's that little ridge right there, and when you look at it like this, you know, hopefully, I mean, if you're a scenic stamper, you can tell, but, um, and you know the imagery, but to someone that's looking at the car that's maybe hasn't done some scenic stamping or whatnot, it's kind of difficult to tell where one image ends and the other one begins, which is a good thing. So that's why we kind of overlap everything and just blend everything in. And we don't have to uh, kind of uh, think about um, a lot of careful kind of masking, you know, or more. What I think is probably a little bit more tedious forms of masking. Not that it's real you know, time-consuming, you know, to stamp something out and just cut it out, because you can use that mask over and over again, but, um, it's just, this way is just faster than that. 
Okay, we have these wolves running across the snow right here. I'm kind of getting a feel of where they might go, okay? I'm thinking about having this light um, kind of shining on this uh, snowy terrain down here, so we'll leave it, you know, fairly stark, but let's create some shadows right in here. So we're going to tone in some shadows right here to represent this uh, moon casting light within this um, space. I might do something else here or there, maybe like a another foreground tree or something of that sort to reiterate the trees in the background. It'd be nice to have, you know, like a foreground tree in here. But I like to stamp my, kind of my main things um, after I've laid in a lot of tones. You can, you can stamp it now, certainly, and just uh, work it like that, but um, I like to go, I, I generally think that if I kind of wait a little bit to stamp those out after I've laid all these um, images down, the images look a little bit more crisp if I just do them after all the blending of tones and everything that I'm going to lay down in here. Sometimes it gives me a little bit of time to think about it too. You know, there's no rush. You don't have to work in kind of a, a linear process. You know, this you gotta do this, then add all stamps, then you add color, then you do embellishments or something like that. You can kind of go back and forth. It's more of a circular process if you want it to be. Meaning you can stamp some images, add some tones down, lay some things out, see how it looks, and then if you want to, you can add more of one thing or another, depending on what the scene looks like it needs. Okay. This, oh, by this way, this is a stylus coat tool, and this is the London Fog. This is just a sponge on this tool right here. It makes for kind of a nice applicator um, of color. It's very comfortable in my hand. And this is some glossy cardstock that I'm working right now. You can do this on a matte cardstock, but the ink kind of absorbs a little bit faster, so you have to kind of stay in an area a little bit longer, okay? Use kind of a, the same touch, okay? Don't try to rush this now. Kind of work a little zone at a time. I'm working like a quarter page zone. If you're working on a quarter page cardstock here, kind of think about breaking this up into fours. So see, right now I'm kind of working on this top left on a quadrant, okay. Uh, I'm switching applicators here. The applicators that I'm using are about 20 years old and some of them are delaminating like that. Can you? I don't know if you can kind of glue that back on, but um, I don't know. I can tell because ClearSnap has changed the material over, ye over the years and so I can tell kind of the uh, the age of a given applicator, and some of these are 15, 20 years old. I can just tell, like this one right here is really super dense and it's higher than the current ones they have, so uh, for those people that are kind of really familiar with um, the applicators and have used them for a time, you don't know what I'm talking about. They're all really good, but they do kind of uh, break down over time, especially if you use them as much as I did. And I used to take them to, you know, workshops and make and takes, you know, and do them in, uh, you know, conventions where you get people kind of using them for the same time. And sometimes they got, you know, a little uh, abused, you know, people scrubbing or something like that with them and whatnot. But for the most part, if you kind of allow them to just be used in nice I would say gentle, man. You don't have to be gentle with them, but just don't kind of abuse them. They'll, they'll last for, I don't know, 10 years, maybe more. Now, if you use kind of some harsher types of uh, inks on them that dry, like a solvent ink or something like that, they're not going to last as long. If you don't have something like this, just use cosmetic sponges or something like that. If you have those now, these are something that you can kind of go out and buy at the drugstore in a multi-pack if you don't have them, and you just kind of dab in and ink like so. I'm going to do this video. I want to do this video um, pretty soon. I just thought about it. If, you know, like I, 
I don't know, a few minutes ago, or a half an hour ago, I thought I'm going to do something that's just using um, materials that I used, uh, you know, that we used to use like back in the 80s and 90s, okay? Specifically, you know, pre-stamp pen, I'm just going to use some uh, um, Marvy ink pens. I'll see if I have some La Plumes or Tombos. I don't know if I even do. I've always had kind of thicker Marvy uh, brush markers like this and uh, let's see I'll use those glossy cardstock I need to see if I have one of those white paint pens too I don't think I do or I, at least I haven't seen it for a while but there were a couple different white paint pens they're kind of similar to uh, you know the modern day like gel pen but they were they were the same kind of brand and make as those ones that um, have the uh, made the gold and silver pens that one that you kind of shake and it has that little ball bearing in it uh, that type okay you can see what's kind of happening here we get this kind of this uh, moonlight shining on the snow down here maybe I won't make it quite so stark white like that uh, I'll kind of just drag a very light layer of this gray across here. There's a tinge of blue in here. It's because my applicator had some blue from the I don't know, one of the previous scenes. As you can see, I don't even you know clean these off uh, too often. If I get to a point where all of my applicators on my desk are uh, you know just black, which they're kind of getting that one's kind of using a red. I can use that in the sunset scene or something like that, but. Um, uh, then I'll just kind of go and wash them all at once. Okay, I'm running a little bit of this tone across that moon, just so it's not so stark white like that. See, it kind of gives it a little bit more of a, a moodier moon, I guess, you know? Having that little kind of haze kind of across there. See this right here? I'm kind of dragging in some things like this and I'm leaving other areas that, you know, I'm, I'm kind of doing it streaky like this. And then I'll come in from the other side and do that. But this looks really good for um, variation, but it works for things like this. It works for water. As opposed to just having this whole area just white, you know. I think it looks kind of more realistic or softer this way to have this kind of oscillation in here, which means that you just kind of have this area of light, but then you just streak in and then you bisect certain areas or you just put a, kind of put a streak across it like that, you know? I think it kind of gives the scene a little bit of movement and, uh, I don't know, it's kind of like, um, I don't know, I, I guess it's kind of like brush strokes or something like that, you know, in a painting. It's nice to have some of that texture going. Eh, some people, you know, everyone Everyone's kind of looks a little bit different too. Um, when I've done these in classes or whatever, and we're applying things like that, this is one of those areas where, in rubber stamping, sometimes you can tell people's tastes in things, and sometimes you know with the media they use and whatnot. But sometimes you can't tell um, who did what. You know, you see all these awesome-looking cards, but when this, when it comes to something like this, where there's so much free form ink application or application of any type of media, you know, kind of someone's almost signature comes into play, you know, like, like a signature or uh, handwriting analysis, you know. Some people's looks a little bit more heavy handed, some looks like airbrushed or something, you know. It's because they just kind of work in a smaller area, they're using less pressure, they all stay in an area longer, some people kind of a little bit more uh, a little bit faster, where it looks like kind of expressionism or something like that. It's kind of interesting to see. And you see it a lot of times, like in their, f if they haven't done this before, you see it in their first piece even, you know, kind of their, I don't know, kind of uh, signature uh, handwriting style characteristics. Sometimes aesthetics too. Um, all right, that was the manganese blue. I just used it out of the pen. I just kind of rolled it onto my 
pad there. And that way you can get kind of more mileage out of it. This is a dye-based ink, by the way. Don't do that with like a, you know, alcohol-based marker or something like that. Um, alcohol would dry instantly on these sponges. You know, those don't. You know, just because the the alcohol uh, nature, the faster drying. Okay, let's switch up to a uh, a gray. I'm just using the same pad here, by the way. Uh, I don't know. That doesn't really do any anything. Here's a little bit darker. I'm not really sure. I sure can't tell. If you can't, if you can't tell, you know, it's like, is that really adding anything to it? It's not dry. It's just that the value of the background is already kind of as dark or a little bit lighter than what's already been laid down. So, just tells you, let's just move on from that one. Okay, let's see, that has that kind of haze there. Do I want to just move right into black now? Or do we want more blue? I don't know, we can do all kinds of different things still even within this kind of this color shading scheme. Let's just go to the black though, okay? Lightly blend in. You don't want to get these oval shapes like that. That's why kind of you work in a kind of smaller condensed area where you're just kind of developing gradations of value. See that like that? Okay, so that's what I'm doing here. Sometimes I'll dab, sometimes I'll kind of lightly streak like that, okay? The lighter you want the center, or wherever your lights are within a given piece, the lighter you, lighter you want those to appear, the darker you make your other areas within the piece and I often do it around the edge, kind of like a vignette. Or I do them in the shadows. So here's these trees casting some shadows right in here. See that? I'll show you the difference between one side and the next, and we'll do the other side. Okay? So see that shadow? It really anchors those trees down, doesn't it? So to come into this side, I just flip this up like that. And I'll streak those colors in. I'm kind of using this at an angle like that. So I get kind of a smaller streak than that, okay? I mean, I might do that if I know I'm going to cover a large area. But let's say I want that area right along that tree line to be kind of more narrow. Then I'll use the side of this, and I'll just keep working it like that. bit of a stronger vignette. This is kind of getting, uh, or is, fairly saturated now, okay? So sometimes it's hard to apply the ink because it's fairly, it's damp to the touch, it's not really damp to the touch on the surface like that, but what it is is the pulp of the paper is kind of achieving this super saturation, you know, it gets past the, uh, the moisture is become absorbed past the surface and the pulp of the paper is fairly wet so it's not accepting ink as fast so I, I kind of do a tapping motion just so it's kind of building up on the surface if I wipe it can you see that it's lighter so you have to kind of tap it to build up little uh, kind of balls of ink on the surface just to get that ink you know uh, retention um, 
to take place. Okay. Now you want that kind of aspect because it makes it easier to blend things together, but sometimes when you get into that third or fourth layer of color, especially um, after you've laid down so much underneath, you know, um, you know, it's not just the number of colors that you use, but it's how much of each color you use um, that will determine the, you know, the degree of saturation within a, you know, a given piece of cardstock. Okay, kind of topping off the uh, top part. You see how I kind of put that in there? You can see where I've, I don't know, wherever it is. See, I'm kind of doing this right here, and I'll show you. So you can tell how much I've stamped off, and I'm just kind of going on this at an angle. See, like that? I'm not going like that, 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 so I don't get these kind of like shapes like that showing up in my card because I have it tilted a little bit more at an angle, so here this is like this. You've probably done this type of thing, you know, like sponging some, like if you ever do a cutout or something like that, or if you stamp some kind of design, you know, you color it a certain color, then you kind of give the outside kind of a darker um, value just to kind of frame it off a little bit. That's the same thing I'm doing here, but I'm just doing it to this, you know, rectangular, you know, shaped card. Okay, so you kind of, you know, you don't go like that, you do it, you know, the other way, okay? Kind of doing that capping off at the top like that, making it, you know, it kind of contains the image a little bit more. Okay. I can tell too the ink is starting to set up a little bit, or the moisture, because as I tap here it's getting a little bit darker, which means the moisture in this, you know, it's starting to dry a little bit more. See that right there? And it's starting to accept the ink. So it's not like you have to wait forever. But that being said, sometimes you do have to wait for it to uh, set up a little bit, you know, if you're kind of, I wouldn't say fighting it, but. Uh, you know, it's just kind of taking too long. If it, if it doesn't seem to be getting any darker, though, don't press harder with these things or start scrubbing it, you know? Because that's where uh, you'll put too much wear on the tips of your, uh, your tools. Plus, like I said, if you scrub harder, sometimes it's almost like you're mopping the ink off of the scene, you know, rather than applying it. Okay, heavier around this these tree lines. Okay. How's that for a nice kind of setting, I guess, for our, for our pack of wolves, our wolf family? I see this kind of like as creating a stage, you know, in my head. And it's a stage ready for your actors, as opposed to seeing something as kind of a piece of a greater whole, you know, it's kind of, in other words, I'm not trying to kind of replicate, you know, kind of a one piece of a larger photograph or, you know, or of a larger setting, I should say. Um, it gives me more freedom to do whatever I want. And plus it kind of sets the stage for, no pun intended, um, kind of this, a world unto itself, you know, when you look at something like this, it's, it, it feels complete as opposed to, um, thinking, oh, you know, I wonder what was over here, or wait, or this area got cut off or something like that. It feels like this is its own little world. And that's kind of 
that little thing, it's like looking through one of those, uh, I forget what they're called, but where you look into a, uh, a uh, you know, little box or something like that, you know, little, through this little peephole and there's like a little diorama in there. It's, you know, those are really kind of fun little things to look in there. There's a sense of kind of, I don't know, wonder, you know, when looking into uh, those things. My mom <clears throat> had these... Uh, sugar kind of Easter eggs that she made before I was born. Um, but inside there was a little hole and there was like frosting around it. it these weren't edible, we had them every year, but <laughs> yeah, there was a scene of like a little Easter scene in there, like bunny rabbits and things like that. Grasses, I don't know if there was a house, but it was, you know, I loved looking at those every year. <clears throat> Okay, let's see here. We have these running walls. We need space for them. Okay. These ones in the background. With the foreground. Let's do the background first. And let's do those ones. I did a test uh, recently with the one dye based ink and uh, the um, Versifying. Boy, Versifying sure looked darker. Uh, to my surprise, <clears throat> I mean, it. I knew it would be darker, <clears throat> but not like 5% more. I, 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 yeah, I don't know. It was, it was quite extreme, I should say. So, these ones being smaller, I guess they could represent, you know, pups, too, or something like that, you know, or smaller little juveniles, but I don't see it that way. I see these wolves as being kind of the same age or whatever, and uh, roughly about, and, uh, you know, they're just kind of farther back in the distance, which means they're just higher up in the composition. There's, you know, just different ways you can handle perspective. Um, but uh, this is just like a Western perspective kind of convention as far as uh, your placement of objects and the representation of depth or distance, I, I should say. Okay. Fun stuff. <clears throat> it's always fun kind of looking at your first... Uh, impression of uh, using a new stamp. I've never stamped that before. Okay, let's see. Let's tack and peel on my things. You always have to kind of save this little plastic that comes with it and put it back on. I guess if you lose it, you can replace it with something, but it's just easier to use that, uh, you know, piece that was cut out uh, with the tack and peel and applied to your block. All right, let's do a Versafine um, black here. Versafine, if you don't know, it's a black pigment ink. And, and it's a faster drying one on uh, different papers. Um, and it, it dries just fine on glossy. If you do an impression with a lot of pigment inks on glossy using uh, different types of pigment ink, it just takes forever for them to dry. Now I use like color box frost white on glossy, but I don't use it to make my impressions, you know, unless I was going to do embossing or something like that, but uh, I use uh, it very sparingly in very thin layers, which we'll do on this one. I think it'll look beautiful on this one um, to do uh, some kind of frosty, foggy uh, effects with it. Okay, I'm just going for an even pressure. I'm trying to be careful not to tilt this side down on my paper because that tack and peel is very tacky and I don't want it to stick to anything that I've already stamped. Okay, <clears throat> there we go. Look at that. Whew. Let's see, that looks... That fits the bill as far as I, I think drama goes. And, uh... I don't know. I mean, that Marvy ink is still a little damp, so it's it's a little bit darker than what it'll look like when it's dry, but I would say there's a difference in value from one to the next a little bit. Let me see. 
These ones are darker than those, I think. Okay, now I can add like some trees that I was thinking about. Maybe I don't know. I might not. I might not want to. Maybe I'll leave them as is. But I'll. I'm thinking some kind of foreground would be um, good in here somewhere. Maybe just some kind of uh, you know a little scrubby brush type of stuff going in there. Let's take a look. <clears throat> I'll see what I have. Okay, I have these kind of these uh, bare um, <clears throat> branch type of thing. I, I forget the names of them. Snowy something. All the names of everything are down in the video descriptions below. I remember all the names and codes of my stamps up to a certain point, then somewhere along the line I just kind of ran out of a, <laughs> like internal memory, and I just don't remember the names. Okay, well, I'm doing this in the lighter uh, Marvy Black. It's kind of weird to think of that in terms of uh, lighter. I've always seen Marvy as being one of the really, really dark um, dye-based blacks, but look at that. See, that kind of gives a little bit more dimension. It kind of puts us a little barrier in between us and those, you know, wild wolves, too, like we're kind of looking at that scene from... We're hidden a little bit, you know, I guess, and we're looking at this kind of this, you know, really dramatic um, moment or sight. I like to do things like uh, these things in the foreground to uh, give um, a little bit more of an extended depth. And emotionally, like I said, it kind of puts this barrier in between us. I'd like to have a little bit of space though where we can enter the scene usually. Okay, so I usually don't stamp something all the way across. It's usually on the left and right hand side, and it kind of acts as a framing device, too. All right, here's the smaller one right here. And I'll add some of this in the background. Maybe I'll just kind of mask some of it off, too, like this. Just so I can use a smaller portion of it. You know, just like I was mentioning, you know, using a smaller portion of that... Uh, um, snowy bank. You can use smaller portions of very small images just to kind of add that extra foliage or extra texture, in this case, extra depth to the scene. You can see that in the background like that. Maybe I'll use just a really small portion of it too. So, I don't know, I mean, <laughs> didn't do anything, it's like three little spikes or something like that. But anyways, okay, now this is going to take a little bit of time to set up. Eh, the Marvy one's pretty, it's pretty dry now. I, I think I can go over that with some additional ink, but, uh... The Versifying is going to take a little bit of time to set up, so I will allow that to happen. And then what I'm looking at specifically is, I think I'm adding, going to add a little bit of a, kind of a little streaky type of a shadow, like that, underneath, you know, right in there. And you don't have to kind of just invent something from scratch. You can um, reference imagery, okay? And just, what I'm doing most of the time is I'm just kind of reiterating what's already on the image. So there's shadows down here, right? But I'm just going to add that little extra little streak. I'll do it not at an angle like that, but, you know, kind of more horizontal right in here underneath these walls. And it will reiterate what's already on the image, and it'll just kind of reinforce that idea of lighting. See, I've kind of created that shadow in the form of these little stippled dots, but 
see that right there? It could use a little bit more of that form of shading right in here, some true gray scale as opposed to black and white, or black laid down in you know various um, densities to create um, that. So, um, I don't know how long it'll take to dry. It shouldn't take too long, but um, we will wait and see. You can always kind of tell when something, how do you, how do you know when something's dry? Well, you can kind of hold it, see like that? You can really see that there's kind of some wetter areas on that wolf right there. See this? I mean, you can almost see it in this video here. I, I think you can right there. It's kind of, it's almost textured right in there because it's kind of like, almost like thick paint. It's a little dry around the, uh, the perimeter, but on the center, you can see it's really wet still. So I just don't want to take a chance of it uh, smearing on me. Uh, it might smear later on, you know, when I add that, but it won't smear as much <laughs> as if I would do it right now. So, okay, so we'll wait for a little bit of time for that. All right, counter bend this. It doesn't have so much of that glare on there, but pretty dramatic and uh, yeah, pretty easy to do. Very monochromatic. And uh, with a little bit of color in there, maybe I'll add some shadows in here too, using some uh, alcohol pens too when I come back, if I can remember. All right, first break on this. Okay, I've allowed this a few hours to uh, dry, and uh, I don't know, probably from one cut to the next there, you can probably notice that uh, some of it, uh, the the value and kind of, I wouldn't say the intensity, but yeah, I guess just the value of this became a little bit lighter. But that um, VersaFine still looks really dark. Let's test it here. Yeah, that seems reasonably dry. It, there was some kind of a little bit of a multi-toned <laughs> look to it. I guess just, just the way it dried. Um, I thought it could still be wet a little bit, but no. True to form, it has dried. This called this is called instant dry pigment um, ink, but uh, but on glossy, like I said, especially when it's stamped out, it's you know it's kind of a thicker uh, ink. It it doesn't um, the moisture of it doesn't absorb into the paper um, as fast as glossy. So it does take a little bit of time. I, I'm not quite sure exactly how much time, but um, it probably depends on where you are, relative humidity, etc. Okay, I was going to add in some shadow into this, and I don't know, I still can. But um, I was thinking, it, I'm not sure if it needs it. Maybe I'll add in a little bit. Let's see. Just trying to be careful um, to not um, leap too strong of a stroke. Okay, now going over that pigment ink, I can I can see it kind of smeared it a little bit because that pigment ink is kind of pigment ink. It kind of dries to a, a chalky finish on glossy paper sometimes. So. Um, it will spread, uh, so just kind of be wary of that, and uh, or be mindful of it, and uh, just apply accordingly. In other words, I'm just kind of dabbing it a little bit, as opposed to streaking it, that might kind of spread it out. But anyways, it makes the shadows a touch stronger. And, I don't know, kind of a little bit more integrated, I would say, with the uh, with the scene, just in terms of the overall kind of look of the ink here. You know, the the streaks and the smoothness of the uh, application of those inks. So it kind of smooths out the shadows a little bit by having some additional tone in there. Um, okay, let's see here. Let's grab some of these. Um, <sighs> markers, 
These ones are just the shuttle art ones. Okay, they're, use whatever um, alcohol uh, markers you have, or it could be dye-based markers too. Um, let's try some of these out. And this one is called blue-gray number three. It's just a very light value blue grin that looks definitely in the spirit of this, um, the tones that are on this scene. Okay, let's see here. Let me check the exposure of my camera here. Okay, that's more like it. Probably looks a little bit more dull <laughs> in terms of the finish there. It'll become much darker though out here when I spray seal it. But anyways, this is more what you see on the camera is more about what it looks like in person. But I'm creating some extra shadows at the base of these rocks here. Okay. And you can add, you know, some of this down here, shadows underneath as well. It doesn't all have to be applied, you know, tones don't all have to be dye-based inks and applied with the you know, sponging technique. That was the blue-gray. I don't know if you can tell any difference. Um, it's very subtle. It just depends on where you add it. Like right in here, see the shadow at the base of that rock right here. Or you can kind of color in the rock too. Let's see, let's carry, let's make this a little bit of a shadow here in the snow. We'll kind of elongate the shadows a little bit. These are those little subtle things that are really fun to do. It kind of adds to the, uh, the overall lighting scheme by creating eh, somewhat directional shadows. I kind of, you know, kind of had them, um, stretching from the uh, the objects that's casting the shadow in this direction and over here I've kind of you know stretched them a little bit this way I mean they're not real long shadows because the uh, rocks aren't sticking out real high I'm gonna leave the, the trees as is just with that shading in here um, I think if I tried to do it with the pens it would look I don't know it would look awkward all right let's add in some additional tones into here in the form of uh, some white pigment ink, just to add that kind of mistier, uh, kind of haze uh, within the uh, scene to kind of give it a bit of a, oh, I guess kind of more of a dynamic nature and a, yeah, some of it will be very subtle, but some of it will be a little bit more obvious. I'm taking my tip here and just kind of fraying it a little bit and opening it up. I want this to be a soft application of pigment ink, so I want a soft applicator to apply it. Okay, something like that. So I've just kind of unraveled it a little bit. You don't want to make it too soft, otherwise it's just like a fra big frayed ball, but that should do the trick here. Okay, and I remember in previous videos, if you've watched them and you've seen this applied, I'm getting a, you know, a decent amount of this. This is my a little bit wetter pad, but see that? That's just way too much ink on there, okay? So what you do is you kind of s smash this down. It's kind of distributing the uh, ink on the tip there a little bit better, more evenly as I smash this down. I'm just tapping. I'm not hammering it down, okay? And then, when you get it to the point where it's like one tap and you can barely see anything being applied, and only through, you know, a series of, I don't know, a repetition of ten taps or something like that, does it show up in a very faint um, kind of haze like that. That's the consistency you want. Alright, now, this really shows up where light meets 
dark. Okay, that's a really effective area to use it. Okay, so we can take a look down here, and if it's kind of a low-lying fog, maybe part of our wolves are obscured a little bit in the mist. Okay. Right. See that? It's just kind of at the base. So it's kind of a suggestion of haze, you know, or fog or whatever in those areas that has been applied. Okay. But in here, you really can't see it because it's, you know, I'm tapping white into white, you know, or white into a very light area. So the contrast between the pigment ink and the, the background is just. It's just not that extreme within the, the that area, but over here, over the object, you can really see it. And you can just kind of raise this up, you know, into the subject matter as high as you want it to go. <clears throat> All right, let's put some back here. How about that? You know, through some of these rocks. Don't, yeah, I wouldn't put it over all of them. I kind of oscillate it so you can have some crisp areas of the rocks and um, foggy areas, okay. Take a look at these ones back here. Okay, where the kind of light meets dark. All right, around the moon, it's kind of fun. Use it kind of that soft glow and uh, it can create kind of illumination within the clouds by making the clouds seem a little bit more like what they are uh, or are supposed to be and that's vapor so you get that moisture kind of a glow you know in the moonlight kind of put some around that moon so see so that's this kind of softer light now and it's casting its that light and creating kind of softer reflective light in theory okay so a soft light source creating soft reflected light you know wherever you put it down here so that's why we don't you know just tone this whole thing out and in, in pigment you have kind of your source of light and shining on something you know or reflecting off something all right so let's take a look down here on these legs down here. I think these wolves look fine just as silhouette, okay? But let's take a look at what they look like. Okay, now I need to be very be careful. I'm kind of tapping pigment ink into pigment ink, so I don't want it to blur or smear, you know, or pick up some of that black pigment ink, and then I tap down and I'm adding kind of, you know, black pigment ink around. So hopefully it just kind of stays fixed. Okay, but see that where I've just kind of added a little bit of that? Doesn't it make it look a little bit more dimensional, you know, than just um, a pure kind of mono value object? You can kind of add this down here and it it kind of turns the object, you know, it's saying that, you know, light is hitting it differently and different areas okay now look at this light is kind of it's all kind of dark up here but this one's kind of bottom lit you know you have the light reflecting off the snow and coming up so let's take a look and see what this looks like see that it's kind of a Reflecting off. Let's do it back here on this tail too. I, I kind of add it sparingly, and then if I like it, I just keep adding more and more. Now, the pigment ink versions, I kind of have to be careful about how much I add. Over the dye based impressions back there, I can, if I don't like it, I can just wipe it right off and it's not going to hurt the images, but 
with the pigment ink it does kind of lift off the page a little bit if I buff it. So I'm going to want to add only what I think, or only what the amount of uh, pigment that looks good, okay? So it's not a precarious thing, just kind of add it little by little. See if you like it and just keep adding more. It doesn't have to be like this kind of a calligraphic approach to something and you know, you do one stroke and it's there and it's set and it's fixed, you know? So just kind of add it little by little over the pigment ink, you know, over the uh, dye-based ink imagery. Like I said, you can pretty much do whatever. And there's not a point of no return. Okay, let's see, let's add a little bit of fog up in these snowy uh, drifts or hills. Some of that to remove a little bit. Decent. Um, let's take some gel pen. <laughs> I'm really tempted to kind of just splatter paint this thing. That that is really fun. That could be like a first snow type of thing. First snow of the year. I'm not sure. Let me take a look at this. This is from the previous video with that splatter painting. Uh, over the entire piece, white. It would look interesting as a texture, wouldn't it? It's one of those things, I, I start doing something in one scene and, you know, I'll just, I don't know, I kind of work <laughs> a lot of those techniques over and over and over, you know. Um, and then I just kind of migrate on, but I like to, uh, I don't know, when I find a t technique, I guess it's kind of like a, I don't know, whatever, the latest fad, you know, within a group, you know, scenes or something for me. But right now I really like the, uh, that splatter painting, uh, technique of the, uh, Dr. Martin's, uh, bleed proof white. Okay, I'm adding these lighter areas in here and just kind of tapering it off a little bit. So I'm adding, you know, quite a bit of white in here. And it kind of softens that transition of light. Okay, so I've streaked in darker tones, you know, or just tones in general like that. And now where I've retained the light, I just kind of work it out a little bit more with the gel pen. So this gel pen is light, so what I'll do is I'll add this into the light. And as I add more dots, moving away from that, you know, strongest point of light, what I do is I I tapered the uh, dots off by just kind of creating a little bit more space in between them. And what this is doing is it's, it's just kind of creating a little bit of a shimmer to the surface of the, uh, the land, the uh, snow. Water, snow, those types of things. I mean, you can kind of create you know, kind of a shimmer with, with anything. Um, in terms of doing the highlights, it could be a jar or a glass or something of that sort. But see, there's more, a heavier concentration of dots here. And as I move apart, away from it, the dots are kind of spread out a little bit more. So it's just, you know, a matter of kind of working one little area, just kind of like I did tones. I work an area, I don't try to tone over the whole thing, okay? That way, I don't know, it's just a little bit more controlled that way, or a lot more controlled that way, just to kind of work a given area. Yeah, 
let's see, I'll maybe try using um, some silver. Silver would look really great with the, that's not as a replacement for the white, but just some little kind of embellishments um, within the scene. I like uh, using silver and black and white, um, blues, definitely cool colors games. Maybe not purple, but um, not that it wouldn't go with uh, silver, but uh, I don't know. It just happens to be my uh, kind of history of usage of uh, metallic inks. Okay, let's take a look here. So you can see these dots kind of tapering off like that here, out there. Very shimmery snow now. And I don't know, I think it it just it kind of brings it to life a little bit in my opinion. Okay, now let's take a look at some of these trees. The tree branches that are facing the moon. I'll put a, it's really dark up there, so I won't do too much of this, but the sides of the tree that are facing the moon, let's put a little bit of uh, highlights on them. Okay, see that right there? Doesn't it kind of reflect the lighting direction of the scene and on the opposite side I'll put the highlights on the opposite side of the tree because they're on the other side of the light source. Okay, now see these little areas on the moon, uh, cloud with moon design. I have highlights in the design and you can just kind of go in and reiterate that with some additional highlights where the, there has been tone applied to the uh, impression, we can just go in and bring that highlight back out a little bit. Okay, I'm adding a little bit of a... kind of a illuminated... Uh, hills of... Uh, I don't know, it's kind of like that horizon line of... Uh, Snow. Okay, now can you see that just that little tiny speck of a moon, I mean a cloud, over the moon, so these ones are being kind of bottom lit for the most part. See like that right there? Makes it look a little bit more dimensional, I would say. Okay. I'm trying to think about that texture, that Dr. Martin's one, if I want it or not. I'm kind of leaning against it, but... I don't know, it might be kind of interesting. Let's do it. All right. I need to uh, wash off my uh, brush. It's completely solid with the previous use of some Dr. Martens. Okay, my brush is relatively clean. Okay, let's get some of this uh, paint on here. I'm going, to, I'm going to go fairly minimal as far as my... Uh, application here, I, I think, or at least as far as how much I'm putting into the brush. I, I'm just putting it on maybe the top half and fairly sparingly. sparingly. I don't think I want a lot on here. Um, okay. My recommendation, unless you're doing this all the time, I would kind of test it out, you know. See how much is being applied when you <laughs> do that. 
it's always kind of you have to kind of figure out the direction it's going to. Sometimes it seems like it's going out in you know one you know a different direction, and see how much uh, I don't know kind of control you have over it as far as you know the amount that's being applied, <clears throat> and then you just kind of hold your breath. <laughs> Not quite, but a little bit. Okay. Can you see that? It's adding kind of a. I, I, the the places on this card that I think it's the most interesting are like right out here. I, there's variation out there, but it's fairly uh. I don't know. Plain looking, maybe, I don't know, something like that. Okay, just kind of a thin layer. Try to angle this a little bit. And it hits them right at the base of their feet, kind of area. Okay, I think that looks good or complete. And that's a little bit of a different kind of dynamic feel to it. Let me get you a little bit right in here. Yeah, it just, I don't know. It's just an additional texture. It's a, an additional... Uh, kind of element to... I think add a little bit of visual interest to given areas and I don't know it does it bring those areas to life maybe a little bit you know if those areas needed to you know to come to life and the areas that are already fairly lively down here I think it you know looks pretty good I mean you can do things with um, your gel pen too, if you want kind of a more controlled application or whatnot. But um, I don't know. It's just those types of things are really fun to do and to see developed. It's uh, I don't know. It's kind of exciting in some ways too. It's a little bit uh, as I've mentioned in other videos. It I don't do it often enough where it's I like have complete control over it, so it's a little bit exciting, I guess, to kind of do some sort of application over which, you know, I don't know, you can get kind of something unforeseen or, I don't know, maybe und even undesirable. <laughs> so, I, I mean, I really was hoping that it would come out. Okay, this is a silver pen right here. Now, in this video, it's just going to look, you know, like a gray pen or something like that, but I'll see if I can kind of tilt this scene up and we, where we can kind of capture some of the, uh, the reflective quality of the, uh, you know, this pen. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit down here into the snow, and I don't know. I mean, if this moon is, you know, these little white dots are supposed to be kind of uh, this reflective type of quality to the, you know, a snowy surface, then the, the metallics can really truly um, lend themselves to, you know, you know, some sort of metallic, uh, reflective, kind of twinkly, shimmery type of uh, surface. I'm adding it in areas where the silver really doesn't show up because it's kind of the same value as, you know, the surface of this card. It's kind of only through, 
you know, the tilting or, you know, the reflection of it within, with a given uh, light source. Let's see if I can see it. Can't even tell where I applied it. Okay, let's say it's right in here. And then you kind of start tilting it. I don't know if you can see that yet, yeah, like down in here. Um, see that you can see some there is kind of come about. I didn't I didn't add too much, so it's somewhat sparingly, like I said. Okay, let's see. There's something like right underneath that wolf in there. You can see some out here too out in that perimeter area, but it goes like that, it's like that. I mean, these are those real, kind of those subtle things that people just wouldn't notice, okay? Just by, if they just came across a card in that or something, but it's really for kind of like the recipient of your card, okay? You know, where they can kind of look at it and inspect it a little bit and you know, maybe they're looking at it, and well, they're probably looking at it in some sort of light source, of course, but, you know, if they kind of hold it at the right angle, they'll get an extra little subtle treat, you know, like right in there, like that, see that? And I have those three out here, it's just kind of hard to uh, show it in this uh, video like this, with this real glary, you know, these studio lamps that I'm using in here. And, um, okay, now that was a shuttle art silver. I was looking to see if I had a uh, a silver uniball, but I don't. But that one works pretty good. Uh, as I've mentioned in other videos, the shuttle art ones are a little bit thinner and a little bit more translucent, so they don't show up as much, but maybe that's what you want. Now this one looks like it's a... Uh, let's see if you can see that. Um, those old glittery things on that. Or, or shuttle art. It looks like it's a clear glitter. Yeah, so it's like having like sparkles in a in a stick or something, you know, in a pen. I've never used this pen. I haven't used 99% uh, of the pens in that pack, you know, but I don't know, maybe 90%, but I'm sure I'm enjoying it. They work great. They're only like a what was it, 20 or $25 for 180 colors, <laughs> including the metallics and all kinds of glitter, different colored glitter ones. Okay, let's see, I can put some of this down here in this lighter area too, since it doesn't seem to have any value at all. It's just, I guess it's just glitter. Okay, let me see if I can even see. Yeah, I can kind of see it. No, I don't think you'll be able to see it, but... It's kind of, you can kind of see it picking up right in here. I added quite a bit of it. Barely see it. I see more of the silver, though. Okay, let's see. I think it's clear glitter like this. I can't even tell if I'm applying it or not. Add some into the, uh, around some of these clouds, maybe. Yeah, okay. You can kind of see it. <laughs> it. It's it's barely visible, even like up close, but I can see it, you know, if it kind of I hold it at the right angle. Um, you know, there is this kind of more reflective quality to it. Okay, so... Wolves in the Mist. Very easy to use imagery, being that they're just solid, you know darkness, practically. There's some tone in it to make them look a little bit, you know, more dimensional, but um, pretty fun to use. Definitely a repetition of uh, image, you know, but, you know, you put something in the background like that and these ones in the foreground. Yeah, it's obvious that it's the same one, but I don't find that to be as distractive uh, type of thing. It certainly has that reiteration of form within this given scene, you know, but that one being smaller, it's, you know, definitely more reflective of being something in the, the back. If I had kind of a long piece, I don't see any reason why we couldn't go with, say, two of these, you know, 
maybe stamp it slightly lower or something like that and it would you know you can kind of create this whole pack or you can just take that one from this one and just stamp it back here you know so you can kind of make this whole running you know kind of larger pack just out of these two designs here so fun to do um, a simple technique as far as the sponging of color but I think it's very effective in terms of creating kind of an overall lighting concept it's basically just darker on the perimeter and lighter in the middle but you can see where you just kind of drag from each side some um, uh, additional value into this overall lit area and you can see where I've just kind of pulled it in you know with my sponging technique like that and from this way a little bit of a uh, hue in there so sometimes if you're working in grayscale it's fun to add in a little bit of tone or a little bit of warmth uh, this one would be good too going with that you know maybe I'll do something like that with maybe some of the kind of brownish tone distressings and kind of out of a, a warmer tinged scene or something like this but in a similar style but just in a different temperature which would be good and last but not least i really like the uh the pigment ink brought into this area right here doesn't that moon look like it's real soft and glowing and then you have that reiteration of that kind of a texture of lighting in here in the form of kind of a soft glow you know at the base of the uh the wolf legs for the most part you know where it's light okay this is kind of dark on medium but this is dark and light so that's where I've applied most of it uh, where it has been used or utilized okay so anyways I hope you enjoy the scene and uh, these wolves will be out before too long thanks for watching